get started. So I can call this meeting to order. Uh, so the first thing on our agenda, the second thing on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. Does anyone have any changes? Well, we can't, can't do anything. We can't approve <laughs> the agenda officially. Technically, we can't call the meeting to order because there's not enough for a quorum. Okay. So I was going to get into that after <laughs> calling to order. In that case, we are not called to order because we're lacking a quorum. Uh, so this will be a working group of the Mopular Planning Commission tonight, and our uh, next meeting will be on July 29th, in which hopefully we'll have a quorum and, and get business going. Uh, so uh, we had a number of things uh, this evening that we planned to vote on that are going to have to be pushed off. Um, but first things first, I will go ahead and go through the comments I'd plan to make with the quorum, and that's... Uh, that uh, we don't have a new member, so we have a vacant seat on the Planning Commission right now. Um, and so we're hoping to have that seat filled uh, by our next meeting. Um, that's all I have to say. Does, does anyone else have anything to add to this one? Okay. Uh, there's no general business, right? Because we Correct. We're just doing a working group. No election of new officers tonight. Uh, which then leads us to the historic preservation uh, meeting from last week. We plan to do a follow-up tonight, and then we were going to do a walk-through in depth of the proposed regulations that came from the Historic Preservation Board next meeting and, <clears throat> and offer our suggestions, and Meredith is going to come and work with us. I don't know if everyone's aware of that. Um, Mike, were you thinking you were going to come also? or? To, to the next meeting? The next planning commission? Yes. Okay. You yeah. and Meredith both will be here? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I only missed the last one because I was putting up hay in the barn. Okay. I just, I mean. Or I would have been there too. Okay. Yeah. I personally, if you wanted to have the night off, wasn't going to have any issue with it. But uh, totally your call, obviously. Uh, okay. Well, in, in that case, what does everyone think about this current state of design review and the Historic Preservation Commission's proposed regs. Well, <laughs> I have some concerns that is uh, more bigger picture about design review, and I'm not sure that they're, I'm not sure where to sort of put them in the process. But, um, you know, I think generally I'm concerned that design review you know, maybe the boundaries could be adjusted because I'm especially concerned about, you know, homeowners who have a house that's technically historical. Like maybe there's a small feature over here because I used to own a house like this. In <laughs> so I do have some, I am bringing some of my personal experience um, and just the difficulty and the extra expense that it is to, you know, fix something or maintain something or change something. So I have that sort of general concern and is there a way? I mean, I I do value the historic character of Montpelier. I'm not a total anti-historic preservationist, but I think there are many instances where there's homes in the design review district that most people would walk by and would not, you know, really have a deep appreciation of the aesthetics. Do you know what I'm saying? Versus, you know, obviously you walk through our downtown and you have a, a real sense of the... Aesthetics. Anyway, so I have that concern about homeowners and also um, just want to raise the question of how this impacts, you know, if we want to develop more housing units. Um, and I'm not sure. I've tried to read the regulations, and I'm not really sure how that all, and hopefully the next session will help me sort of visualize how that all is affected and fits in. But so I just, I just have those two general concerns, I guess, about design review, but I'm not sure if that's appropriate for, for the review of this. Um, and another question I had, which I didn't think to ask last time, but was, I'm just curious if they have any records of the public input they got or how much public input they got. I'm a little bit curious about that, too. Um, and I know they did, they made, you know, efforts, but I, I'm just curious about that. So. That's a good question. I think Meredith next week will be able to, or next meeting, oh, right. will be able to okay. go into that because she's she staffs their yeah. meetings, and so she would have firsthand. Um, because, yeah, it seemed like there wasn't a lot, and but it was kind of vague. What do you think, Stephanie? Well, I think it was, it was good to have them come. I think there were some, um, 
some issues that I had in my original read through, questions I had in my original read through, uh, like the library example that someone from the committee gave, the addition of the library, because some of the language was, if you're adding a piece, sort of like the new development question, if you're adding a piece to a new building, it should be, it shouldn't try to match the historical nature, but it should be compatible with it, but it should be different, and that some of that balance seems challenging to me, but I think the library is a good example, so that was helpful, but I still, there's still a lot of arbitrary, it's, it's still a little arbitrary to me how exactly that happens, and I think new development is, falls within that too, as far as matching the nature, but not copying the historic district, I'm not exactly sure. That's a, that seems like a fine line to me, so I wonder, a little bit about that. I think it was really helpful to have you come though and, and explain from their perspective what it is that they're trying to do. Um, I also think the boundary, I think we're going to need to talk about the boundary for sure sooner than later. I think going through it next week first makes sense. We have an understanding of what we're looking at. But um, I, I think some of it, some of what your question leads me to think about is specifically what that boundary is. And if it's a house that's not actually historic, should it be in the boundary? But then if it's between historic, you can't like section out one house. So that gets a little complicated. Yeah, I know it's comp it's a complicated question, but to me, there are houses that are historic, but are not. And, and I guess it gets hard because it depends on the whole neighborhood and the whole look of the neighborhood. But a lot of houses to me that are historic, but I don't think most people walk through, you know, just, like, appreciate it. I mean, I used to live in the old North End in Burlington, and that's what I'm, where I owned a house, and that's what, like, there were a lot of just, you know, we're all under this, like, historic preservation thing, but I don't think you would walk through a lot of sections of the old North End and really feel like you're in a historic neighborhood. But maybe that, you know, I haven't, I'm not sure exactly what's in this design review district, and I don't, maybe I should walk around the neighborhood. I, th I think one thing that will help next week is if we can have Meredith or Mike go into before we start diving in. So we're going to have a busy meeting. But before that, to talk about how the document we're looking at will be applied in the real world. Because the, the feeling of being re heavily regulated Either comes from or doesn't come from like the process that the doc that the that the regulations put into place with, like for instance, I mean some of it if it's just DRB review and jump in and correct me, Mike, if you you know, but when when something's just up for DRB review, a lot of it really is just suggestions, and the, and they're working. The DRC. Oh, the DRC. Sorry. The DRC. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. So yeah, DRC. So and then the DRC were some of the folks that were here last week. Because uh, we just, I mean, I can I can tell a personal anecdote where. Uh, so my wife's expanding her childcare business from our home, and one of the regulations is you need a four foot tall fence. So she applied to get a four foot tall fence put in around our house. She had to go to design review committee for that, uh, and was kind of worried about it. And I told her not to. Uh, and then. Uh, it was really painless, oh, and they and it was like things like suggestions, and like and like lots of questions about how it will fit into things. And she kind of had answers, and they accepted her answers. And um, there was nothing like you shall do this. No, nothing like walking out of it. She was she wasn't really bound to anything, um, or at least didn't feel that way. Uh, but she's and then afterwards she tried to stick to what she told them as far as when we put the fence in and she told like for instance I mean we just painted it white and she said it would match the house but she didn't really say which of the house's colors but they didn't really <laughs> the trim's white so we painted it white <laughs> um, so that was her experience and so I think yeah and and I feel like they missed that opportunity last week to some degree yeah. to, to go into that and talk about how it's not always that intrusive Although the new rules are going to would change the dynamics of what they're regulating and how what standards they have to meet, so there's going to be a little bit of a shift. How the DRC has been enforcing the existing rules, is the existing rules are generally more vague today, which we're concerned about from a legal standpoint. We think they have to be more specific because of some of the recent court cases. So. We think it has
has to get more specific, and, and if it gets more specific, uh, how does that impact? Um, and the experience we had before from the Planning Commission was that we wanted to just start to, to narrow the scope of reviews if things aren't going to matter. Um, so we tried in the original version to go through and say you can replace your windows. So even on a historic house, you can replace the windows, but the windows have to be of the correct historic character. So if it's got divided light and it's a six over six, then you're going to have to put in a window. It can be new window, but it's going to have to be six over six. Whatever the, the thing is, the DRC would, would review it, but you could replace the windows. and. Historic Preservation, Division of Historic Preservation, wasn't happy with that. Um, but the windows came off the exemption list, right? So, yeah, so they won, They pushed back, and eventually we ended up having to just shelve the whole proposal. But we were looking at those types of questions. So as we get back into it, we're going to be kind of back into the same thing, because we didn't want to have some people get required to keep the windows and fix them, and some people get permission to replace them. We're like, well, it really should be consistent if it's either we're going to make everybody yeah. keep the old windows unless they meet a clear set of standards, unless you can demonstrate one, two, three, you have to keep the old windows and fix them, or is it we're going to let everybody do it? Um, and the same came up with things like roofing. And um, my father in law lived in Burlington was just replacing asphalt shingles, take off asphalt shingles, put on asphalt shingles. And code officers came up and stopped him, had cease and desist because he didn't have a permit for replacing the asphalt shingles on his roof. Did he have an old house? Yep, he had a historic house, but it never occurred to him that replacing the asphalt shingles on his roof. Well, if you're going to get a permit anyways, you know. So we wanted, that's what we had talked about when we were doing this during the big zoning rewrite was roof treatments, window treatments, porches, doors, these things that we get a lot of. We should have a nice clear rule that says you can replace your door with a modern door as long as it's of historic character. You can replace the roof as long as it's of the same character of the roof you're removing. So if you've got standing seam, you have to keep standing seam. If you want to go from asphalt to standing seam, then you got to go to the DRC. So we could have a bunch of these or vice versa, if you had standing seam and you wanted to go to asphalt, you'd have to go to the DRC to get approval. And you may get denied because the character of a certain building may be you know, a federalist building. You tend to find federalists have more standing seam than, or slate. You know, they didn't want people going in and removing a slate roof and putting in an asphalt roof. <laughs> so. What is the Division of Historic Preservation? Do they approve design review regulations? They only do, they don't in our case, but we are a certified local government. So as a CLG, we have signed up to, as a community, to hold ourselves to a higher standard. And Division of Historic Preservation gets to comment on whether we get to maintain our CLG status. So they made some threats about where, um, whether whether we would be able to maintain our CLG status if we allowed the replacement of that. So whatever we do, we'll probably have to go back to division and get it approved. So Jamie, who was here at the last meeting, works in that office. Yeah. But the do we work with him? My day job? Yeah. So those, those are some of the balancing acts that we'll also have to get into is, is the requirements from the state in order to maintain our CLC status, which gives the historic preservation opportunities to get grant funding um, to do various projects. So, um, so I, think there'll be a, I think there will be a balancing act that goes in there between what we want to regulate and how much we want to regulate. And, Aspects. The other thing I wanted to ask, um, there were two specific districts that were called out within their regulation and within the existing one. I think it was River and the Gateway mm -hmm. West, is it? I don't know it's actually called. Um, why specifically those two? Do you know what the origins of that? We just kept them as we transferred them over from 
regs. From the old regs. Um, the truth is, it ends up being very strange because there isn't. We don't get a lot of applications. We don't run almost any applications through. I think because it's not the design. There isn't anything in the gateway that's in the design review district. And we haven't generally considered the entire district to be in design review. And I don't know if that was the original intention. I haven't seen it work out that way. But when I've read it, I've wondered about that too, is whether, whether all of these other districts are also added onto So is it that all lot. of the other districts are treated the same, and then those two have like their own special needs for some reason? Yeah, they end up in design review, and, and some of this, some of this has to kind of come down through the buckets. If it, you know, you might have a rule here, but if there's no way to get to the rule, nobody actually has to beat it. It's we use that bucket analogy a lot because it starts at the top in the applicability, and you've kind of got to get your way down there. And if the thing is, it's regulated to the design review district, and then it says everybody who's in the gateway has to meet these rules, it's like, well, they're, they, not, in they're not in here, so they really, we really can't actually apply the rules to them, even though there are rules that should be applied to them. The only rules that would apply are people who are in the design review, like Riverfront. There are portions of Riverfront that are in the design review district, and therefore those would get would there have to be the extra the standards. I west. don't think there's anything so gateway that section just west. Gateway west would be um, Green Mountain Power and, that's the and, and some of those. So those are in potentially a review district, but not necessarily historic district. Yes. So if, have change, so if we get rid of the other review districts and just have a historic district, then that doesn't apply. Yep. Yeah, so we would have to look at how. I, I haven't looked at the newest. I made a set of comments as they were doing their initial review. This is like their version 3.0. So I commented on 1.0 and 2.0, and I didn't get an opportunity to read where 3.0 is going so. so for the boundary discussion, because of... Okay, I think this is where I want to start asking questions. Considering city council removed a neighborhood and from historic preservation design review, are we currently, do we feel like we're in compliance with state law? Of, with what, with, with, the, with, with what the boundary is now? Yeah, without uh, Yes, Street? there's no, there's no issues right now. Because the only requirement we have, and it's not really under state law, the only requirement we have is because we are a designated downtown, Everything that is in the designated downtown must be in design review. That's, that's what I mean by state law. Yeah. Like the, even the things that were voluntarily yeah. opted into. That's it. the only requirement that we have is that that's that's where we'd have to start is the minimum okay. has to be. The minimum is the, the designated, designated downtown, downtown, which Cliff Street's not in whatsoever. So if, uh, there are one or two that are. Side. The one that comes up from court. And are they? It's not cliff until you turn right. So they're and they're current and they're and they're currently in them. And they, the city council didn't remove in, that. Correct. Was Cliff okay. Street in before, or is there a bit to add them? Cliff Street was in before. Yeah, okay. city council so removed, removed Cliff that Street. Based on all the, the public in, input, yes. But we still don't know where that original boundary. Yes, the first boundary was somewhat arbitrary. This, this boundary is somewhat arbitrary. <laughs> what a great place to start. <laughs> <laughs> it was somewhat arbitrary. Um, the National Register District was also a little bit arbitrary through there as well. But that doesn't the they somewhat that they somewhat overlapped through Cliff Street. So Cliff Street was is in the Design National Register Design District, or is in the National Register District, and then our Design Review District in that area tended to overlap, and so they were in. 
So for a boundary discussion, one thought is that we could just try to tackle this after we do the deep dive on the regulations and it's fresh in our minds. But of course, there's the public input component. And there's a chance that we do something other than the bare minimum. If we do the bare minimum, I don't think there's any risk of like the public. The bare minimum being the existing minus the if, if we do as small as we are like legally can, then I mean, you know. But our discussion is going to go beyond that, right? Even if we end up doing the, the bare minimum, like our discussion will go past that, which means that maybe there should be public input, or there definitely should be public input. So with that in mind, what do we think we should try to plan in the, like, should we, Mike, do you think it would make sense to, in a month or two from now, maybe hopefully sooner than two months away, have one of these meetings dedicated to the boundary question in which we make an extra effort to attract or invite the public? Yeah, I think I think it would, should probably be in the fall. A lot of people are busy during the summer and not here. I don't think we'll be ready before the fall anyway. So I think if we wait until September to have a public meeting, that and I think we could probably make three or four different map options that would go through and say this is what we've got, and this is kind of either the minimum or the minimum plus all of the. Downtown commercial neighborhoods that are right that tend to have more commercial activity on. So, like the design review district, I think the designated downtown only covers half of Berry Street, maybe the lower half. But we would probably want to go and regulate both sides of Berry Street, um, just because sense to be not looking at both sides of the street as it goes down. Um, so I think there, there are times we could just add in the rest of certain neighborhoods that might make sense and then just go through it so we kind of have the, the smallest, We've got the existing, then we can go all the way out to, here it is, out into the residential neighborhoods that includes anybody who's in the historic district. which wasn't popular when we proposed it before, but I think we could put in a range of options that goes and says, you know, that these are the options that actually go all the way out to the entire city if you wanted it. Um, we would probably recommend B, because it seems to be a good balance. And then you just kind of see what the public thinks. If the public is supportive of more of those um, protections because usually it's just a matter of talking to people to make sure they understand. You don't want to regulate yourself, but how many of you guys are going to be the first ones to come in here and complain about your neighbor? Probably a lot of you, if your neighbor decided they were going to do something. Um, and these are the rules that let you balance. And we've talked about, but I don't remember where we have ever landed on this, but, but we've talked about possibly having design review that's maybe a larger area, and then within that, having historic preservation limited to a smaller area. If these rules can be easily broken into two pieces, kind of the historic design review and then design review, then yeah. I'm not sure they can be, it's, though. It's really historic focused. It's, it's very historic a, focused. And so this is going to be it for our design review. Yeah, I mean, so I think it would be like, difficult for us yeah. to do two different without going back and doing more work. I think this, my, my impression when I read it two months ago was kind of one shot. So I think if, if at the next meeting we go through it, I think that makes sense. I think we might, questions might come up that involve, but how does this affect based on the boundary? I think specifically with those two sections that it addresses. So we might need to talk about it a little bit, but we can try to go through it first and see mm -hmm. what we think. And just It's just the historic piece, so we can assume it's maybe a slightly smaller area. But then I think it would be really helpful to see all the different maps. So the historic register map, the existing design review, the designated downtown, one of the different pieces. Yeah. And then there's just the zoning neighborhoods. There's a lot of neighborhoods that kind of are historic, and you could kind of add on or subtract off. 
neighborhoods, if it made sense, because it might mixed use, residential kind of goes out Elm Street past the, say the bakery goes right, right along Elm Street at the start of it from Spring Street out. And so should that be designed? It's mixed use, it has some commercial in there. I think it's more policy questions at that point where the line goes. And maybe if you're going to do it, you'd probably put the whole neighborhood in or you're not going to put the neighborhood in. Well, I think one thing Stephanie was kind of hinting at is, I mean, these things go hand in hand. I mean, I've said all along, I'd be more inclined to have a larger area covered if these were flexible. But yeah, the less flexible they are, the more you want to focus them on the most oh, yeah. commercial exactly. and historic. And, and they seem to be oriented toward, and I mean, Ariane, because I know what she was saying too, like toward really trying to protect the resources are there, in which case they may be it's more appropriate for a smaller area. Um, but since they go hand in hand, it's like it'd be in a perfect world we do them simultaneously. It's not looking like it's going to come out that way. I think we can still talk about it before having, I mean, I think we should talk about it before having a larger public meeting anyway, so at least we have a better understanding of what, mm -hmm. what the options are and why we might be leaning in a specific direction. It'll help when talking to the public to know what, or to have a better idea of what exactly the regulations will be. So I, I think going through the next meeting still makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It might, it might be helpful to have some of the maps so if we get into specific questions, especially like those other two districts in there that are just endlessly competing. Um, so we can we can at least look at it and see. I think that's a good idea for next time. But but then but then have the actual boundary discussion, maybe the meeting after that, yeah. where hopefully we'll we'll have we'll be close to what we. Uh, want to suggest for the boundary and then have the public meeting a month or so after that so that puts it into like September like you were saying in the fall yeah I think it'll be easier once we're into the fall to get people to come out okay so we can have the maps maybe unprojected or something at the next meeting because yeah I feel like that would help me I'm, I'm visual think, yeah. so I, yes, yeah, I want to exactly. see yeah <laughs> that possible, right? Yeah, let's see if we, if we can either get them digitally or, or some hard copies of them. I printed this out <laughs> from the internet, but I'm like... Which boundary is that? The this is, I, I think it's the design control district, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, so I don't know. Okay. Did I, I print off? Okay, yeah. It looks like, I think. I'm guessing it's on Yes, that is the current design control. And then they put in the CCV and they put in the VCFA parcels. Isn't which, that just vacant land or am I? No, that's, that's. Um, or not CCV, but that other parcel. This, this one is vacant, but they took all of the college owned par property. This one's currently for sale. But oh, okay. Was, oh, I didn't that realize that. That was all the college, college property. Owned that. Yeah. Property um, there. But they are so under state law happened? exempt. Yeah. Based on the last discussion? No, these, these have been there? here for okay. many years. Yeah. The irony is that these are both exempt from design review under state law. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that's a little. And, 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 they, and we've had a lot of stuff where people are like, well, we can still. I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> It's a little bit frustrating, but Well, yes. not like the state has state properties. Obviously, yeah. the state properties. The state properties don't count. Yeah. But which, is why we, the which is why under the new zoning, they're, they're cut out. As an exclusion. You know, some, of, some of the feedback we received in the new zoning was like, why are you leaving the state out? And it's like, it doesn't matter if they're in or out. Like, it doesn't they're apply to them. under state law. So, so yeah. BCFA is selling this parcel, which is vacant land, mm -hmm. which once they sell it, it, it won't be exempt, right? But once they sell it, it would still be. Oh, it would still be. Yes. Oh, I guess what? I was assuming it was exempt because of an educational it's, institution. It, it would still be in design review. It would no longer be exempt. Right. Yeah, yes. That's what I meant to say yeah. if I said it. Yeah. Yeah. Should so. it be in design review if it's an empty parcel? Right. Probably not. Right. 
Because it's only, that piece is only in because it's owned by. It was only in because it was formerly owned by the college. Right. Yeah. So then it shouldn't be in there. Yeah. So yeah, whatever random boundaries we have would be helpful to look at. That's, yeah. And then with zoning, if we want to make it match specific districts. So did we want those for the 20... Those would be good for next. It would be helpful 12. to have them at the next meeting. Yeah. So have them for the 29th. I think. Just in case we get any questions based on right. going through it. Right. I will. S s s s I will do the best I can. Just just a couple just of printouts maybe, maybe for that one. Yeah, from the 22nd. Just to, in, in case it comes up, something to look at. Yeah. But yeah, current so not, current not current zoning map and current and current design review maps. So like, yeah. to I'm trying to get some 11 by 17. You could see the National Register District too. That would be helpful for me. But to see how different that is from our existing. Register district. It would be helpful if we could make it actually a boundary that's for a reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The arbitrary one we previously had, but uh, and that's the only thing that to me seems like a more solid line, although I know that didn't go over very well last time. So I understand. But you're saying that even the national map isn't wasn't the process that went into it wasn't exactly it's, thorough. It's meant to be strictly um, just a study of the structures that were built within a certain period or theme. And so they just end up with a really big district. And I'm not sure if that just was generated from the fact that there was a number of fires that burned most of the downtown in the 1870s, 1880s, 1890s. So everything ended up being built all at the same time. And so therefore, when they did the National Register District, it all came out as this was all built in the same period. Well, that's what they're getting burned down. So uh, that's just a guess. But we, we have the largest district in the state Are by far. Are they anything over 50 years? Yeah. If 50 years is the cutoff. Okay. Um, but you've got other places that could be the meadow is not in the is not in the district. The college is not in the National Register district. Um, so there are a number of neighborhoods. College Street isn't. But there are a number of places that could be their own district, but probably would be a different time period than okay. our current district. So we probably have two or three. We should have probably two or three historic districts. So how would different rules? Well, they would, these would be from the from the national register, from the planning standpoint. We would have different districts. How okay. what gets regulated? How we regulate them? Would be different. I was just curious, how many towns in Vermont have design control districts? Top of my head, a lot of them would. Curious. There's quite a few of them that do. I know there's at least 11 CLG certified local governments, so I think you have to have design review. Okay. Just curious. So I'll try to get some okay. for, for next time. So if nothing else, our working group is definitely narrowing down like what we're going to look at specifically the next couple meetings. We're going to have to push off the election new officers until the beginning of next meeting. That's yes. awesome. So. And I'll put the RPC rep on the next one as well. Okay. Well, yeah, we have, some, we have some time to sort that out. September. Okay. Yeah, I'll, email, I'll email you some of my notes about maybe the order of the okay. discussion based on what we've been talking about now. Which is basically like what I'm thinking is we can start with an introduction based on process and then go into substance of the other proposed regs. 
Okay. The 30 seconds on the city plan. So I've been continuing to do some implementation strategies with committees, um, and I've been working with the historic committee. Um, so I'm actually meeting with them again tomorrow night on their implementation plan. So uh, housing we did last year with the housing committee, I'll probably go back and revisit with them. Um, historic. Uh, I've got a draft for energy. I'm going to try to set up a meeting with them. So the plan. There's not much here, but what this just did is the chapters. There were about 12 chapters we were going to put for the plan. Um, certain things I was going to be working on, you know, prepping notes, meet with the committee, prep an implementation plan, meet with the committee again, revise the implementation plan, have the committee approved. So I'll be meeting with each one of these committees three times. Then when it's done, it could go to you guys. So I've just started to fill this in and start to pull across. But like historic resources, I'll be meeting with them tomorrow. It was was seven nine. Their meeting got canceled. So. Um, and then I'll get a revised one, and hopefully they can improve it and it can be done. Um, same with housing. Energy, I just I have one that's drafted and ready to go. Uh, I met with Barb, but we'll have to meet with the committee and talk with them. I'm working on economic development right now. Um, I don't have the notes done. Um, natural resources and transportation were two of the next ones. I had started last year, I had started utilities and facilities. But there's no committee to review those. You know, we don't have a committee to look at sewer and water. And For natural resources, is that conservation and parks? Yeah, that's conservation uh, and parks. And flood resilience? Okay, well, it's the, requir <laughs> it's the requirement. We have to have flood resilience, and it has to go somewhere, so that's where it would naturally fall. Okay, but there's not really a committee that talks about that. No, probably it's going to fall to the Conservation Commission and their discussion of rivers. Um, we would probably get into the, the, a lot of the details there. I would happily be part of that conversation because that's my, that's the day job. I can let you know when the conservation is going to meet. So I'm going to get those things. So like I said, I, I generally prep some notes for them. I put a bunch of stuff out there. Um, of thoughts and ideas, and I bring with me the, the discussion of a city full of butterflies, rainbows, and unicorns thing, and I go through that with them and explain to them where we're trying to get to, and then and then really give them the opportunity to start to just throw stuff out, and then I gather it all in and kind of organize it and go back to them and say, this is what I've heard, and then we try to polish that up, and that's how we finish. So that's how we kind of break it into three pieces. Um, I've met with Historic twice already. We'll hopefully get this finished up. And as I said, housing mm -hmm. was the guinea pig that we started with. Um, implementation pretty much is done already. Um, that was the example that we did. And then I'll just keep working these things through. So my plan was just to keep working on this on my end. And then as we get these things up to sent to Planning Commission, then I can start handing them off to you guys. and. Hopefully by then we've got historic preservation, design review mm -hmm. done. It's not like nothing is happening, but at some point you will be responsible for land use. So we'll have to work on that as a group and hopefully we'll start to be able to pull some pieces together and have some public input and decide from that point once we have implementation plans. Um, the discussion we had last year was to work a little bit backwards. Most of the time we write the chapter and then we write the implementation plan afterwards. But this one we decided to do a little bit backwards. We'll work with the committees, we'll do the implementation strategies, and then because we want it to be more succinct with what we're saying, let's write the plan of what we're going to do and why we're going to do it, and then go back and write that 1,500 to 2,000 words on transportation and really focus on 
telling the public what, um, why we're doing this and why it's important, as opposed to starting out with a big blurb of all the statistics and data and everything, and then yeah. you end up with a 500-page plan that nobody reads. We wanted to kind of make it much more succinct. That really focuses in, in on 1,500 words on why our aspiration and our vision is what it is. And then there'll be appendices for all the other stuff that if you really interested in the data, click on this link and you can get the data. But um, And then if we could turn those into short videos, that would be the ultimate, but that would be after we get everything approved. Um, because some of the plans that are nationally going on right now is they're web-based plans and like 80% of the traffic are people viewing the videos. So if you want to know the housing plan, you would just, you know, go to some of these ones and you go in there, you got the housing plan and the housing plan has been digested into a 10-minute video. You can click on it and it's professionally produced and it doesn't bore you with all the statistics. It just kind of goes through the process of housing and why it's important and what we're doing and why what we're doing is important and why it's going to help us achieve our goals. Um, same thing with transportation and natural resources. And um, I think I think it would be good if we could get there, but we first would need to approve the plan because you can't make a video until city council has said that is our goal. Now we can go home make a video and put it on the web. Um, but I think it would be, it would, I think that that was our approach that we agreed on before. So even though it's, we've been kind of sidetracked with a lot of stuff, I've been trying to, as this winter has wrapped up and we've gone through spring, I've started to jump in and get more of these. As I said, energy took a bunch of time, historic resources, I'm working on economic development. So hopefully we'll have four of them moving pretty well this summer. And I'm hoping, like I said, natural resources and transportation next. I appreciate the implementation focus and the clarity and brevity <laughs> focus also. <laughs> um, I think that's going to make for a much better useful product, which I, sounds great to me. Um, feeling a little disconnected from the process, so I would love to be involved with this natural resources group. Yeah, just to kind of see how that process feel goes. Feel a little more, yeah, because I'm not really clear on what's happening. Yeah, I think it, it makes a little bit more sense, and, and I can bring maybe for the rest of the group when we, maybe after the next meeting, because we'll be busy. But I can bring in and kind of show you when when you guys get historic resources, maybe I will show you this is the, these are the notes that I gave when I did prep notes, and they came back with me with this. Which I then turned into this, and I then turned into this. And you don't really have to review it. It's more just a matter of seeing what that process was and what you have at the end is the culmination of you know three months of this iterative process of developing something that we think is going to be effective. And here's our vision. Here's what we're going to do. And if we did what we're going to do, are we going to accomplish our vision? Hopefully, the answer is yes. Is that the vision we all agree on? So are you working uh, with these groups on something? I'm just wondering how this is connected to like the, the three goals that some of these groups brought to us. This is something different that you're working This with is on? related to it. We go back and look at what their three goals were and try and I try to integrate that into their notes that are being prepped of, you know, this is what's in the existing plan. Um, here are some notes. Here are some things I know from other communities I've worked with. Here are the things you mentioned when you were when you gave your three things. Um, now let's start to build something. Start putting some pieces together. Um, what are some tools that are out there that perhaps you're not even looking at using right now? And then we can start to get into. What are some things, in, in some cases, what are some things that we are doing and does it make any sense? And we have some energy things in our zoning that we kind of just go and say, is, is regulating the shading of structures really a good idea? Um, it's only in there because they want to protect solar resources, but it also forces buildings to be farther apart and makes them shorter so they don't cast a shadow. 
is that really the goal we want? Is 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 that a magical thing? Not shading your neighbor's house really that important that we should be doing that? Um, as opposed to you know your energy plan is really talking about weatherizing and energy efficiency and and yet we spend time regulating this other thing. Um, so sometimes it's things we're doing and whether it makes sense for us to do them. In other cases, are there better tools that we could be utilizing? Um, you know, could tax stabilization be helping? If we had points towards weatherizing buildings, would that help the people to weatherize buildings? If they knew they could get a tax stabilization on those improvements. Maybe yes, maybe no. There aren't any points right now something to consider if when you say people do you mean the members of the committee well um, tax stabilization for any property it or only just... only because of the way our law is written it only applies to commercial properties yeah okay that's all about but we can always change change our rules well, I appreciate that this background work is happening and is moving because we're going to need it, and none of us are able to do it. I mean, so it's great. So thank you, Mike, for moving, yeah. moving all that along. Um, and it's looking like, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to this in a couple of months and then hit it hard and try to work exclusively on that. Because I think once we have some implementation plans, and especially I think once we have a, a, a number of the implementation plans, I think this process will move a lot faster. Because once people have agreed on that, then it's just a matter of writing a chat, writing that 2,000 to 3,000 words that explains what we're talking about in the implementation plan, and then just reviewing it against the state regs to make sure we've met. Have we checked all the boxes of things we need, or do we need to add you know, a link to a report on well, energy? Or I'm imagining these implementation plans so that the Planning Commission will give its input, we'll get public input, we'll try to take the public input and um, make it work with, you know, with what, with, with, you know, the other stakeholders and things. So there, there will be that entire process, though. Yeah, like we afterwards. have to have the process, because there's going to be a balance. Like I said, I'm doing historic, and we're doing energy. And if historic comes out with, you know, um, very strong recommendations about maintaining historic, um, historic windows, and the energy committee is really big on saying we've got to get these things replaced, I'm not trying to steer... I want historic to write their their chapter to their thing, understanding that this may change as it gets balanced with somebody else. Um, and the first people to balance it will be the planning commission, and the second group will eventually be city council. Or is there a section that's missing? Transportation writes its plan, energy writes its plan, and then we get done. We're like, hey, nobody talked about public transportation, and it may come back up to here where we send it back to another go and say, you know, we think public transportation would be part of the transportation plan. And therefore, the transportation committee, we're going to ask you guys to work on a discussion of public transportation, or it could be energy. But in certain cases, certain things are going to um, have to be addressed. So is it the understanding of these committees as they go through this process that it will be sent to us and we were conflict resolution we need to make decisions and send it back for them to update in some way or change at our level. Yeah, if we make us. changes, then it'll probably go back to them. I mean, do they even have that in there? Committee approval, sent to PC, PC approval. Oh, no, yeah. it didn't so really So there might be a send back update process. In it, it might be a send back only if we feel like we need it. If it yeah, if, right, yeah, if it right. needs to yeah. be tweaked or it may just be, yeah. oh, FYI, we, we, removed, we removed this because we it's, you know, you have this one strategy. You had five strategies listed. We don't think we're going to support strategy four. We're going to take that one out um, for whatever reason. Um, so. Yeah, it would be helpful to see the, the outline of the process. So that was that was the only reason why I kind of printed this out. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it was not really to talk about so much the 
what the dates are that are in there, but really to kind of go across the top and say, this is kind of the process I'm working on. And although there aren't too many dates on there, there's a lot more that has happened that isn't really reflected in here. Sounds good. Um, we can't consider minutes. Can't consider minutes. We uh, so yes, yeah, this is a working group. There's no reason for adjournment or anything, but everyone feels good for the night. We can come back in two weeks.